Welcome to Deep Dive Defense. Over here we give rare insights you won't hear elsewhere. In today's video, we will analyze the performance of Iran's so-called ambush-type air defense systems throughout the 12-day conflict with Israel in June 2025. And in the later part, take a detailed look at Iran's Tabas Ambush SAM system. Ambush surface-to-air missile systems, SAM, hold maybe the most significant importance for Iran's overarching strategy of defending its national airspace. First, we must address the question of whether Iran's concept of ambush SAM systems ultimately failed as a result of the Israeli strikes on its capital city, Tehran, or if the reality of the situation is more nuanced than it might initially appear. The fundamental concept of an ambush SAM system is that it does not remain in continuous operation like an ordinary air defense battery assigned to protect a vital region. Instead, it leverages its relatively small size, its small footprint, to be potentially located anywhere along the routes that an adversary's fighter bomber would need to cross to reach its intended targets for direct overhead bombing runs using low-cost munitions. Consequently, the primary defeat mechanism for ambush SAM systems is to create a statistical probability that they will be within the range to engage a fighter bomber attempting to intrude into the airspace under protection. This means that this specific type of SAM system is not designed to provide protection against all possible strikes and at all times. This is unlike the concept of a surface-to-air missile umbrella, which relies on layered, constantly active systems to prevent any intrusion into the protected airspace altogether. What ambush SAM systems accomplish in practice is primarily the creation of that critical statistical risk of a fighter bomber being shot down. This, in turn, incentivizes the opposing force to utilize standoff-guided munitions, which are launched from a secure distance beyond the suspected operational areas of the ambush SAM system's reach. This was well observed in the Ukraine war and the avoidance of overhead bombing by the Russian Air Force due to the presence of Ukrainian, Soviet-made Buk M-1 SAM. Therefore, within the Iranian context of the 12-day conflict with Israel, it was precisely systems like the Tabas that compelled the Israeli Defense Force Air Force to depend on standoff missiles and drones for projecting firepower onto Iranian targets. The inherent problem with this approach for an attacking force is that such weapons that can be launched at secure distance are not only costly and limited in available quantity, but it also never unleashed the sheer firepower that total air superiority and direct overhead bombing with heavy, low-cost munitions would otherwise enable. The operational impact of this single constraint is so substantial that it effectively decided the entire course of that conflict. Iran judged that the volume of firepower Israel was able to project toward it was sufficiently low to justify selecting a strategy of attrition warfare. This strategy ultimately led to the Israeli side requesting a halt to hostilities as quickly as within 12 days. A short time prior to that conflict, the United States had entered into a strike campaign against Yemen's Ansarallah in an effort to halt its naval blockade and missile and drone strikes against Israel. This short-lived campaign raised questions within United States military circles regarding why Central Command forces in the Middle East expended such a large number of high-cost standoff munitions against an opponent like Yemen. This depleted valuable stockpiles of such weapons that would be necessary should any major conflict arise in the Pacific regions against China. This subsequent controversy indirectly demonstrated that the United States military had credible concerns about entering Yemeni airspace with its own air power. It is important to note that Yemen possesses a much more limited quantity of such ambush SAM systems, all of which derive in some form or shape from Iranian-designed systems. Therefore, it can be clearly deduced that if the more powerful United States air power had such significant concerns when confronting Yemen, then the Israeli concerns regarding ambush SAM systems operating within Iran would be substantially higher in terms of actual operational risks. Consequently, systems like the Tabas did not really protect Iran's capital city Tehran against Israeli strikes directly, but they certainly forced the Israelis to rely primarily on standoff munitions and drones for their attacks. And even if Israeli fighter jets had managed to penetrate Iranian airspace on a deeper scale, this would only have been possible due to the prior creation of a secure attack corridor. A corridor enabled by United States space-based electronic intelligence and a high-effort suppression of enemy air defenses and destruction of enemy air defenses mission specifically executed to enable that raid. 
However, quickly after the establishment of such an air raid corridor, the persistent risk of Iran relocating an ambush SAM system to a position near that very corridor would have disincentivized its repeated use for any subsequent air attack. These operational details illustrate why a system like the Tabas is such an important asset for Iran. So let us now take a detailed look at how this prime example of an ambush system functions. The Tabas Medium Range SAM system, often regarded as the lower end relative of the third Kordad, initially part of the RAD program in the early 2010s, the Tabas emerged as a low cost, quickly deployable interim solution, while the third Kordad required further development before entering volume production. It is believed that Iran acquired a sample of the Soviet Buk M1 system, which incorporates early 1980s Soviet technology, sometime in the late 2000s. While the predecessor of the Tabas, the Rod, utilized technology from the SA-6 Kube system, the availability of Buk M1 technology enabled the IRGC Aerospace Force to create an enhanced indigenous variant. The Buk M1 was particularly appealing to Iran, which faced the threat of conflict with the United States and its vast tactical air power. The Buk M1's all-in-one single vehicle concept was a significant advantage for Iran. This system could operate independently without being part of a larger battery structure, with both the surface-to-air missile and a multifunctional radar mounted on a single vehicle. This configuration allowed for target search, acquisition, missile launch, as well as tracking and illumination during the endgame phase. Ideally, the Teller vehicle would connect to upper echelon sensor assets of the integrated air defense system for early warning on approaching targets. However, in emergencies or communication failures, the radar could still search a sector for intruders. One major advantage of the book system over the SA-6 Kube was its ability to engage targets at higher altitudes, addressing a critical vulnerability of the legacy Kube SAM system. Additionally, the book system's relatively low cost enabled Iran to field more of these SAM systems. The effectiveness of the book M1 system was demonstrated during the Russian-Ukrainian conflict, even 40 years after its introduction. Throughout the first two years of the conflict, the Buk M1 served as Ukraine's main frontline air defense asset. It was difficult for the Russians to neutralize due to its ambush operating mode, which relied on accurate and reliable early warning data from NATO sensors, particularly space-based electronic intelligence satellites, communicating with the Buk securely via satellite communication systems like Starlink. This showcased the effectiveness of asymmetric ambush air defense systems in neutralizing an adversary's air superiority, a feature Iran valued against powerful threats like U.S. air power. For the Tabas system, Iran made several straightforward changes compared to the Buk M1. The tracked launch vehicle was replaced by a modified commercially available truck, which is cheaper, more reliable, consumes less fuel, and maintains some off-road capability although not as much as the Buk M1's tracked vehicle. The Buk M1's cost-efficient inverse Cassegrain radar antenna was retained, but its tube-based transmitter was replaced with a more reliable solid-state emitter. The electronics were also digitalized, allowing for more sophisticated signal analysis, which is useful for identification and countering jamming. The missile load was reduced from 4 to 3, enabling the use of a commercial truck-sized vehicle and benefiting from the concealment of a smaller design. During the Taba system's development, the ambitions of the Aerospace Force Self-Sufficiency Jihad organization grew, leading to a project aimed at designing a SAM system that would be on par with or superior to the Russian Buk M2 SAM system. This project eventually became known as the Third Kordad SAM system. In comparison, the Tabas is limited to having just one guidance channel allowing it to guide one or two missiles towards a single target in sequence. While very useful, this does not provide the simultaneous engagement capability typically found in high-end, state-of-the-art SAM systems. Its role as an asymmetrical ambush asset greatly mitigates the single-channel engagement limitation. The low-cost radar design allows for the production of many more launchers compared to the more advanced 3rd Kordad SAM. Like the 3rd Kordad, the Tabas benefits from a highly capable and reliable commercial chassis imported from a foreign country, with modifications to lower its height by moving the cabin in front of the forward axle, thus improving system stability by lowering the center of gravity. Additionally, the modified vehicle can be armored to enhance its usefulness for frontline operations. A significant advantage of the Tabas over the Buk M1 
is its longer range missile, which can reach 40 to 50 kilometers compared to the Buck M1's 35 kilometers. This missile, the Tear 2A, features a more powerful solid propellant rocket motor derived from the Sayyid 2 missile, which boasts higher technology than the Soviet missile developed in the early 80s. The Tear 2A incorporates technology from the SA 6 Cub and Buck M1 missiles, using an inertial measurement unit and a semi active radar homing seeker. The Taba system is believed to have entered initial service in 2014, two years earlier than the third Cordad SAM system, as its serial production was easier for Iran's industry to master at that time. Over the years, improved versions of the Tabas have emerged with more powerful radars, increasing the maximum range from 50 kilometers to 90 kilometers, and utilizing the Tear 2C missile from the third Cordad family which has a maximum range of 105 kilometers and can engage targets up to 90 kilometers away with the improved radar of the Tabas system. The upgraded Tabas versions also feature a gimbaled and stabilized long-range thermal camera for target identification, discrimination between decoys or jamming, and angular tracking to counter jamming interference. This enhancement also improves the system's ability to counter low observable threats especially when receiving early warning from upper echelon integrated air defense system sensors via a data link to the launcher. The long-range thermal camera enables target tracking without requiring the target to be within the range of the Tabas's X-band engagement radar. It is believed that at some point, the rod system predecessor, with its search and fire control vehicle and separate launch vehicle, was replaced by a new combination of a rod fire control and search vehicle combined with a Tabas launcher and radar vehicle. This combination reduced the rod's footprint in high-threat frontline regions, limiting it to passive infrared volume search for target acquisition and delegation to Tabas Tailars. This way, rod systems could remain fully passive, retaining only the footprint and signature of a civilian truck. Passive target search and acquisition would allow Tabas systems to operate under strict emission control, only emitting in the final phase of engagement. Therefore, Combining a rod and a Tabas vehicle enables near-passive operations, even without connection to the upper echelon integrated air defense system, a condition likely faced during a state of degradation by enemy actions. This combination would also increase the engagement channels from 1 to 2, increasing firepower. With a maximum altitude of 25 kilometers, the Tabas can reach nearly all air-breathing intelligence platforms that pose a threat. It is believed that the Tabas system, alongside the older ROD system, is the main frontline air defense asset of the IRGC Aerospace Force Air Defense Division. Utilizing ambush tactics, the low cost of the mechanically steered radar allows each launcher vehicle to be equipped with its own radar. Therefore, it is not believed that the Tabas operates within a battery structure where transporter erector launcher vehicles lack radars. Instead, each Teller vehicle has its own radar and emergency autonomous search and engagement capability, ensuring redundancy and operational capability under the most adverse conditions of high-intensity conflict. While the predecessor ROD system offers key benefits due to its passiveness, it has a larger footprint as at least two vehicles are required for a functional SAM unit. In contrast, the Tabas needs only one vehicle. Although the exact quantities of the Tabas fielded are unknown, it is possible that this system is more crucial to the IRGC Aerospace Force Air Defense Division than the more advanced but significantly more expensive 3rd Cordad SAM system. With the range improvement from 50 km to 90 km, the Tabas has moved beyond the medium range category, possessing a remarkably long range for a compact asymmetric ambush SAM system. So that's all for today. If you liked it, give a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. It really makes a difference in the YouTube algorithm and is a great support to the channel. The real enthusiast can become members and given access to exciting membership area material. Thanks for your support and motivation. See you next time.